and welcome back to the Mad Skills series on performance debugging. Today, we'll talk about the Perfetto Trace Viewer, which is an alternative to Android Studio for viewing system traces. The Android Studio Trace Viewer is optimized for app development and for integrating with an app developer workflow. So it's a great tool to start with from the app dev perspective. The Perfetto Trace Viewer provides some additional trace viewing functionality that may come in handy if you're looking at interactions between multiple processes, or if you want to know more about what is going on on the system outside of your particular app. It's a browser-based viewer that's available at ui.perfetto.dev. Let's take a look. The Perfetto Trace Viewer is located at ui.perfetto.dev, and it's a freestanding browser-based viewer for SysTrace files. While the Android Studio Profiler has integrated trace recording, if you're planning to use Perfetto to view traces, you have a few different options to get them. Perfetto does have a web-based trace recorder accessible right here in the UI, but I find that the most convenient way to record traces is either to use on-device system tracing, which I showed you in an earlier video, or to use the record Android trace script from the command line. Each of these strategies gives you a different level of support and ability to fine tune the traces you're collecting, so check them out and pick what's best for you. Before we jump into taking a trace, I do want to call out one last thing, which is that Android Studio makes it super easy for you to deploy, run, and profile your app after making a change. In order for profiling tools to have insight into your app, like to see in-app trace points, you'll need to compile with the profilable flag or use a rooted device. On Canary versions of Android Studio Bumblebee, Studio will actually highlight and confirm that your app has the profilable flag set in the manifest. The Perfetto Trace Viewer and other trace collection tools will not flag if your app is missing the profilable attribute, and they will not call you out if it's set to debuggable, which can have performance penalties. So when you're recording a trace outside of Android Studio, it's important to double check and make sure the app you've profiled is set up correctly. Now we'll collect a quick startup trace using Record Android Trace so that you can see what that looks like today. If you want more documentation on that, there are great instructions in the Quick Start section of the Perfetto docs. All I need to do is run this script, pick an output file name, and then add a list of trace points. I always just copy this great default list from the Android platform documentation on SysTrace, which I'll link in the notes below. Then hit enter to run, go to my phone and start the app, do a little scroll, and then control C to stop. It'll actually save the trace file at the path I provided, but also go ahead and open it in the browser as well, so here we are. There is a ton you can configure in Record Android Trace, so definitely dig into the docs there if you're on the power user side and there are things you might want to know that aren't included in our usual defaults. So let's take a look at the trace. One of the first things you might have noticed as I opened it up is that I don't need to select which process to focus on. That's because Perfetto is optimized for understanding the entire system, whereas Android Studio is optimized for understanding your particular app, so it needs to know where to focus. Now at the top of a Perfetto trace, we'll see a similar high-level breakdown of device activity. On Android Studio, at the top you saw a breakdown of your app's activity in particular, and then a similar CPU and frequency breakdown as you saw in the CPU section of Studio. Then if we continue to scroll down, we can scroll through trace points on every process running on the device. These processes are generally sorted based on what happened on each one during the trace period, and in this collapsed view, we can see a summary of when the work was happening. So we can see that the iOS Get app is first on the list. We can also see Android's system server, other system processes like Surface Flinger, and other apps that are running underneath as well. The Surface Flinger process contains the information included in the Display section in Android Studio Profiler, including vSync trace points and Surface Flinger work. Now let's open up the IOSCED process. First few rows are information about the process. Note that these mem.rss sections are the same information as provided by the Process Memory section in Android Studio. And as we continue to scroll to the UI thread, which will have the same name as the process, we'll see the same CPU state information and trace points that we saw in Android Studio Trace Viewer. For each thread, we'll see CPU state here at the top, trace points underneath, and we can select an area to see CPU state aggregation as well as trace point aggregation. Note that if you zoom into the very beginning of a running CPU section in Perfetto, you'll see a tiny light green runnable section. This represents a time where the thread was able to run, but hasn't quite been scheduled yet by the scheduler. As of the Canary Bumblebee release, Android Studio also shows runnable trace sections as well. A process spending a lot of time in this runnable state indicates that the device could be under heavy load, and it can be good to keep an eye on that information if you're concerned about overall system performance to understand if your CPUs are becoming overwhelmed and may be unable to schedule priority tasks like the top app in a timely fashion. Now one of the key reasons to use Perfetto is that it provides tools to help you understand the relationship between different processes on your device. 
So for example, we can zoom in on these binder transactions during app startup, click on the binder transaction for details, and then click destination slice to see who was running the code at the other side of this binder transaction. In this case, that's system server responding to this request from the app. For most apps, the optimized view of your own process in Android Studio is all you need for debugging. But if your app has multiple processes or you want to dig into these relationships between your app and other processes like System Server, you might want to use this approach in Perfetto to observe how the processes are communicating with each other. The last thing that I want to share is that Perfetto is an early adopter for the Android S shared timeline view. And if you have a device running the S beta, you can see dropped frames clearly in Perfetto. Android Studio will have support for this in future releases, but you can get a sneak peek here. So let's go back to the top of the IOSCED process. And over here we can see two rows, expected and actual timeline. Now these two rows represent the time we expect to spend drawing a frame in the app. And if you see a red section in the actual timeline, that represents a frame that took too long to draw and cause jank. So we can scroll down to the UI thread, zoom in, and actually correlate the frame numbers from the missed frames with the frame numbers in choreographer.doFrame to confirm which bit of work took too long and contributed to jank. Then you can of course use that information to figure out why and what you can do to fix it. The Perfetto Trace Viewer has a lot of great advantages in terms of helping you understand system behavior and inner process communication, but on the other hand, Studio Profiler has great app developer-centric optimizations that really dial the focus in on your app, and it integrates right into your development workflow. These are both great tools, and they'll both take you to the next level in terms of understanding and improving your app's performance. And that's all for now. Thanks for joining us on this Mad Skills series about performance debugging. If you enjoyed this series, make sure to check out more Mad Skills episodes, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Android Developers Channel. Thanks. Mm -hmm.